everybody. Now, one of the things that can commonly happen with really old dogs, they don't even have to be that old, but it, we often reach a point with old dogs where we have to let go of the beard. We've had this beard on a dog for a long, long time. We're used to it. People don't like to change that, get rid of it. Um, he has a lot of mats in his face, so there's no choice there. But even if he didn't, especially as they grow more senile often, like I said at the beginning, when they have to have their faces interact with or held or, or anything done to them, they are resistant and sometimes they even become frightened and frantic. So I'm going to move a little closer because there's a couple of little hacks I'm going to teach you about uh, getting, cutting a beard down if you need to. This is mostly something we do with old dogs, but not always. Oh my goodness. There's a big old burr in there. All right, buddy. Well, we'll get that out. Dreadlock and a burr at the base of his, <laughs> at the base of his mouth. Okay, so there's a whole lot of hair here that we're just never going to need. If he was going to have a nice trimmed up head, he'd only have about this much anyway. So this first bit, we can just go ahead and take an angle this way with the scissors, the thinning shears probably. I like to use the thinning shears because it's not quite as harsh a cut as, um, as straight. So thinning shears look like this. You have a straight blade on one side and you have teeth on the other side. And starting at this, at the corner of the eye, I'm gonna see how I've got the front of the beard, the part I'm gonna keep in my hand. And then the part that I'm not gonna keep is loose here. And so I'm gonna start just a little at a time with my thinning shears cutting into that. and I'm slowly moving this way. I hold the dog's head at this angle so that the hair falls pretty naturally the way I want it to. Right, I'm gonna shorten this eyebrow a little bit also. Good boy, buddy. Stay with the beard. So here's the part I was going to keep. Here's still some more that's matted and superfluous. I don't know ultimately how much of this beard we're going to be able to save, but I'll save however much I can that doesn't uh, cause the dog any, any hardship, which might be not much of it. <laughs> we'll see. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Bring forward some hair I hope to save. Cut away the excess that I expect I won't be able to save or I'm not going to bother to try. Because these mats are just... There are some things you can do with mats to try to make them a little less of an issue. Um, but the first one is knowing when they're, huh, they got more, more strength than you do. All right. So now I've got it down to the, the revealed a little more of the cheeks and the jaw on both sides, but I see I've got a couple of dreadlocks now, um, back in what was the part underneath the throat. So I'm going to have to clipper that away still. And gently lift up and see how much of that hair I've saved. Pull that forward. And then just move that line, that clipper line right here. Just move it a little bit forward. All right, now let's see. No, nope, still some pretty big mats there. So I'm going to do the same thing again.
Now this dog's being really good about having his face held. Sometimes I'll have an old dog like this that uh, is not nearly this good about having his face held. And we don't even really get an opportunity to try to save any of the beard. Then we just have to go right to a retirement beard. Um, maybe uh, hopefully be able to get something like a three blade through it. Um, hopefully not have to resort to something like a five, but you know, sometimes you gotta do it. Like this, like this big old dreadlock mat, that's not going, there's nothing we can do with that. That's the one that's got the burr in it. So I'm gonna lift the hair out of the way, really isolate the hair I wanna work with. I'm really grateful how good he is. I can see very clearly when I put, when I'm working this close to the mouth, I want to see every part of my scissors before I open and cut every part that isn't just like right behind the hair. I want to see the both tips before I cut. I want to, I want to be able to see exactly where I'm cutting so that there's no chance of, um, of cutting the skin. Whew, those mats are right up there, right up to the lip. And huh, looks like looks like we may not actually have much we're gonna be able to save here. Let's give this one more go over here and then I'll be able to see more clearly. And the nice thing about doing it a little bit at a time like this too, is, you know, if your dog needs a break and you need a break, you can give it to him. You know, you can spend 15 minutes uh, once a week keeping them in maintenance condition as opposed to two hours or something like that, you know, depending on how long it takes you to do it. I can probably do this job in pretty close to an hour, but um, others probably take a little longer. All right, little by little. And so now I lift up all this and I see that there, that there might be just this little tiny bit at the very front that I might be able to save. It's really just not much left, much else I can do here. So I lifted forward the hair that didn't have any tangles in it. I still don't know if we how much we'll be able to save or leave, but while I'm figuring it out, I leave what I can. Oh my gosh, you're so so patient, buddy. Okay. Now then, now I can break things up a little. Now I don't. It's not so overwhelming, and now I can start to take a good look at the the beard here, the mustache part of it. And there's some corded dreadlocks in here too. So, um, well, a little at a time. Maybe we won't need to take a blade to it at the end. Maybe we will. Now, his upper lip is right there. So again, I'm always gonna work so that I can see. And maybe I can only take a few trims at a time and maybe you have to keep moving around to make sure that you're putting the scissors in a place where you can see what it what's going on I have a feeling that he is going to end up with what I call a retirement beard. <laughs> um, one way or another. So it might have turned out to be not necessary to have done this long involved process of trying to trim away these mats. But on the other hand, um, sometimes you can get part way through that process and realize, okay, some of this is savable. So if you don't go slow, you don't get that option. But again, if the dog loses patience and it's starting to get too hard for him, then you just got to call it and get that clipper blade out. Let's 
Yeah, I've hurt the hair up. Make sure I can see. If I am not comfortable with how close I have to be to the skin of the lips or the ears or something, I can pinch the hair between my thumb and forefinger and scissor right up to my finger and thumb. And that way I know I'll never cut the dog because I've got a whole finger and thumb width between the skin and my scissors. So anytime you're, you're concerned about getting too close, you can do that. You can, you can just pinch the hair so that you can feel, I can feel his lip in between my fingers, my finger and thumb. And if I scissor up to my finger and thumb, then there's no chance of, um, of cutting him. Cut some of the mats in half on this side. They're still pretty big. Yeah, yeah, I was afraid of that. They're just too thick and too close to the skin to um, for me to be able to save his mustache in any kind of reasonable way uh, that won't involve pulling and upsetting him. So I am gonna go to using a clipper blade Got a few different ones here. We'll see what we can get through. I'm going to start with the three blade. It has the, the farthest, uh, the, the longest teeth of the metal cones or the metal uh, blades without adding a comb. Now, when you are trimming the face on an old dog, even if you have to leave some mats at the bottom, Leave some hair on this beard. You need it to hold on to when you are doing some of the trimming that is where you'd be holding. Sometimes you, you need a little, just need to have a little bit to hold on to. All right, so lightly. Yeah, sometimes they don't like the, the clipper on their face. The vibration it makes it sore. He did a little better when I started from the back. Yeah, sorry, buddy. Retirement beard for this old guy. If there's some places where I can't get the clipper blade through, I may have to go back to thinning some mats out again. The mats on this side are thicker. Okay. Now... We'll even this up a little bit. Let's uh, let's get him some eyes back real quick. I'm gonna scissor this area between the eyebrows right here. It's called the stop. First, I'm gonna make a little path straight up between the eyes with a lot of little cuts. Light though, I'm not uh, uh, opening and closing hard. I use what I call the spaghetti grip, the wet noodle grip. You really only want to be holding the tools as hard, uh, the minimum amount of hard that it keeps them in your hands. Now let's get the inside corner of the eye. A lot of people think that the dog can't see because the eyebrow is in, the, is in their way. What keeps them from being able to see is more the fan of hair that grows up right here off the muzzle. So... We're gonna trim that back. Gently, carefully. There's a module on doing um, this kind of trimming in the maintenance clipper work class. And there's specific modules about uh, all of the details of uh, doing Schnauzer heads and faces in my other course on Schnauzer heads and faces. Yeah. Generally, when I have to give him a short beard like this, I'm also, in the end, going to give him a, a pretty short eyebrow. You know, it always amazes me when I do these old dogs, and I if I have to give him a retirement beard, how many people 
come up to that dog afterwards when it's been my own dog or people have told me when it was theirs and said they thought that I'd gotten a puppy, I guess because the beard was so short. But, and you know, I think some dogs get kind of a new lease on life when they don't have all that hair on their face to worry about. He's got some big eye crusts. So I'm gonna gently pull out what I can, um, but sometimes it gets really stuck in the hair and if your dog's really um, intolerant of the pulling, you wanna get a warm, wet washcloth and kind of soak that area a little bit and that will make the, uh, the crust come out easier without um, having to pull so much. Oh, good boy. That's a pretty big one in the end. We got most of it. But you can see he gives me pretty good signals when he's like, I don't know, lady. I don't, I don't want to do what you're doing. So I got to go slow. Be mindful. And also recognize that everything I push him on is going to be a little less of something else I can work on, probably. All right, good boy. All right. Let's see, got my straight scissors here. I can even things up. Just get a little bit more shape here. Some of this hair still a little bit matted. Once we get it brushed, then um, we'll be able to make our final adjustment. Okay, now. Let's redo this clipper work a little bit now that we know where the new lines are. Now we can come farther forward. The normal place for the clipper line on a schnauzer is the corner of the mouth. A lot of terriers, uh, the clipper line comes to the lip fold. For the dogs that I give this retirement beard look to, I usually use more like the terrier line um, and just bring the whole thing up closer, a little easier to care for. Now the lip line itself is tricky. So what I learned to do in grooming school, stick my finger up in the pocket of the cheek to stretch the skin so that I can flip her down along the contour of the lip line. That took me some practice, so that's not something you're going to jump right into doing. But if you've been doing it for a while, that might be a good next step. All right. So since that's come forward, then that's going to change this line right here. I can't believe how patient this boy's being. He's starting to get a little bit more resistant with me though, so I can tell I'm running out of his patience. don't like having to bring their beards really short um, in terms of appearance, but sometimes you just have to. He's 14. He shouldn't have to deal with anything just because I want him to look a certain way. He's earned the right to have an easy to care for face. Let me trim the edges of his ears a little bit. A 
And again, the details on how to, how to do this part, this maintenance clipper work, this maintenance grooming is in my course. Maintenance clipper work for schnauzers and grooming the head and face of your schnauzer. If you ever have any questions about anything you've seen me do in a video or uh, in a demonstration or anything else, and you'd like to ask me a question, by all means, please feel free to email me at strawhatstandards at gmail.com and uh, I'll be happy to set up a free consultation call with you or, or anything else to dis, uh, discuss any special needs you have. Maybe uh, you'd like to, to try grooming your old dog and uh, you, just, you just want a little hand holding, you just want a little bit of supervision we can do that in person, we can do that over video, and um, I'm happy to help you to learn how to do that. All right, final step on his face. Let's get a very gentle brush with soft pins. It's a slicker, so it has pins, but this type, this Artero, has a very soft, soft bristles. They give easily, so they're not, they don't pull too hard. Just try and straighten out any last little bit of mats before his bath. Good boy. All right. There we've got retirement, a retirement face on a nice 14 year old dog so patient with me i'm so pleased i am going to go ahead and give him a little bit of a break it's been about an hour uh that he's been on the table between me talking and me grooming and after he takes his break then i'm gonna trim down his legs and trim less uh, trim away some of this excess hair on his underline he's got some mats in his legs so these are probably going to end up shorter also and uh, then he'll get a bath they get fluffed out a little bit boy old dogs are super super sheddy so um give them a good bath that'll help get rid of some of this excess coat so then when i reclipper him again afterwards it'll be smoother and uh, not as many clipper lines and stuff like that so uh, that's another way to get a little bit better results Pre-clip, then bathe, dry, and then come back and re-clipper. Um, trying to get it all done in one go. Uh, generally, you don't get as nice of results. And, uh, you know, if, if your dog lets you, if it's a younger dog, um, and you have that option to do two passes with the clippers, uh, I think you'll like the results that you get better than just doing one. All right. Thanks, buddy. Mm. Thanks, everybody. Love your dog for me.